So happy to be here with everybody. Uh, my name is Ellie. I'm a massage therapist, have been a massage therapist for 20 years. I'm a certified aromatherapist, also Reiki practitioner, pranic healer, so I do a lot of things. Um, I'm also a master gardener, and it's really funny because when I was very young, I was always loving the scent of the roses and the herbs, and it must be coming a thread in my life um, that essential oils have always been with me. So as I'm um, journeying on, on this path, uh, I decided to become an aromatherapist. And it's really wonderful. It dovetails with my, um, with my work. Uh, I really would like to stress before we start, safety on aromatherapy. So many people do not get how powerful and healing the essential oils are. They're considered the lifeblood of the plant. So if I give you a cup of peppermint tea, you can drink three, four, five cups, no problem. But if I give you um, three, four, five drops of peppermint tea of, of essential oils, you can have gastric intestinal problems. They're really strong. People think that they can just apply them everywhere on their hands, on their, and it'd be fine. The only two oils that you really should apply are lavender and tea tree, and not every single day. I take a break from my oils. I'll do a blend with jojoba. I use basil, oregano, and lemon myrtle, which are amazing for antifungal, antivirus. And I'll put that on the bottoms of my feet after I finish a shower in the morning. But I always take a break. So I'll do two weeks, take a break for one or two, do two weeks, take a Some people re don't realize they're, oh, essential oils. It's natural. It comes from the plant. I'm buying a good quality one. It's, it's safe. But they're strong. They're medicines. They were the first medicines in the world. So um, really important. Robert Tisserand, who is one of the foremost um, experts in aromatherapy. He does all safety research. And the questions keep coming over and over to him, like, can we take essential oils internally? Can we put them on our, our, on our skins? The answer really is no. There's a lot of companies out there that are great, they have great things, but they're not clinical aromatherapists or certified aromatherapists. All they do is they love their oils but they don't know enough about them, and it's really important not to um, ingest them. Really, I can't stress that enough. Everybody thinks it's okay to put them in like little capsules and ingest them. Well, if you're taking oregano oil, you, you know, you can take the supplement oregano, that's fine, but the essential oil is so much more powerful than the supplement. So I really needed to say that about safety because I think it's really important. Um, my favorite oils are lavender. Is Marianne here? Oh. Marianne, one of my friends, Marianne, is like the lavender queen. Everything is lavender, lavender, lavender. She, she it's amazing. Lavender is one of those uh, oils that just about everybody loves. Mm, maybe it's not the favorite of somebody, but I don't think I actually have ever met somebody that hated lavender. Lavender is, um, balances the nervous system, and it is, um, heals burns, wounds, bug bites. It really should be in your, in, your, in your kit. It's like one of the most important things, lavender. Um, as long as it's lavender and gustafolia. There's a couple of different lavenders. If you use spike lavender, spike lavender is real mentholy because of the constituents in it. Um, spike lavender is really great for when you have like mucus and you have like chest congestion, but you wouldn't want to actually inhale that if you want to be relaxed. So as long as you know your lavender, the lavender that you're using, you're in good shape. Lavender and gustafolia is the one that you want. Peppermint is the next one. Peppermint is awesome for digestion, awesome. Um, I also use it for pain relief. It's really good for headache blends. If you put in a little jojoba oil and you rub it on the tops of your um, shoulders or, or on your temples, it's really great for um, headaches. But it's really amazing, an amazing oil for um, digestion. 
I had one of my daughter's friends, she's about 22, she was a camp counselor this year, and she volunteered to be on the bus. Well, she gets car sick. So she's like, oh my gosh, I feel so sick. I have to close my eyes. I'm like, how do you take care of the kids on the bus when your eyes closed? And she goes, I have to. She gets, I, I, I get too nauseous. So what I did for her is I took a couple of uh, drops of peppermint oil, I put it in a baggie, um, and put it in, in, in the cotton, closed up the baggie, and she was smelling it the whole time. And she calls me up, she texts me actually, and she goes, oh my gosh, it really works. I'm like, yeah, it really works. That's really a premier oil for nausea and digestion and really like headache relief and like stress for your neck. So peppermint is another one that should be in everybody's, um, everybody's kit. Eucalyptus globulus. Um, can't say enough about eucalyptus. It comes from Australia. Australia has a standard, is the only country in the whole world that has a standard of essential oils. It's, um, it's tea tree, and I think they're going to start standardizing lemon myrtle, which comes from there too. It's pretty amazing. If you have a huge batch of eucalyptus, the government comes in and tests it. If the batch does not meet that testing, that batch gets destroyed because they have such a high standard for eucalyptus. Everybody knows that where they come from. I mean, you see the koala, t the koala bears and the eucalyptus trees. Um, they have all their eucalyptus standardized. It's, you can't get inferior of eucalyptus if it's from Australia. Um, we use those for cold and, um, and flu prevention. You can stick a couple of drops of eucalyptus in a spray bottle and spray it during especially cold and flu season. If you work in an office, have a little bottle and can spray it all around. It's really amazing for germs. It really is one of the premier for germs. And I love it in my massage blends. I use a lot of eucalyptus in massage blends as well. Oh, yeah, tea tree. Tea tree is amazing. Tea tree is the other one that's standardized by the um, Aus by Australian government. And they're going to standardize lemon myrtle. They're just waiting on a lot of the new research to come. I don't know if you guys know this, but essential oils, they're thousands of years old. But there's not a lot of studies on essential oils because like one oil could have 500 different constituencies. Like rose oil has, I don't know, like hundreds and hundreds and they only know a very small fraction of what makes the rose oil smell like a rose. So there's a lot of studies still that they're doing um, to get more information on the efficacy of all the oils. Tea tree is an amazing, um, is amazing. And Robert Tisseran, the guy that's really tops in research, he um, has done some studies. It's effective against MRSA, which is pretty, pretty amazing. But it's effective against MRSA skin infections. He uses it for like head lice. You know how hard that is to, <laughs> to get rid of? And like dandruff, things like that. It's really, um, tea tree is totally amazing. Uh, lemon myrtle. This is a brand new oil coming out of Australia. The latest research that I read is about they're doing, they're in hospice cares for AIDS patients. They're doing massage and they're diffusing um, lemon myrtle oils in the wards. And they're finding that the patients are actually rebuilding their white blood cells. Now we're talking about hospice, which is kind of the last, last care and we're talking about AIDS patients, their bodies are really, really, have been deteriorated. They're growing white blood cells. Um, they're doing all these new testing. They're thinking about uh, the MRSAs and all those horrible um, diseases, and they're thinking that lemon myrtle is gonna be the next one, but they're still working on the test. But I think, what I heard is that they're gonna be standardizing lemon myrtle too. It's not a common oil in the United States, um, it smells a little bit more candy-like than regular lemon. Lemon smells really crisp and fresh. Lemon myrtle is a little bit, smells a little sweeter, like a little candy. But the, um, the amazing studies that are coming out from lemon myrtle, that's going to be the new up-and-coming um, essential oil. You're going to hear a lot about that. 
Cyprus um, is cooling and it's woodsy now for the, when the weather's changing. I love to diffuse Cyprus in my, in my home. It smells like really like woody, like green. I just love that. Um, you could put it on a tissue if you have like spasmodic coughing, so it's coming from your chest, your chest is really tight. You could put it on a tissue or a cotton ball and inhale it and it calms the lungs. It opens up all the bronchioles and it calms the lungs. So it's really good. They're using that for asthma attacks too. So if the, if the person is just on the cusp of starting to get an asthma attack, they're using cypress oils to kind of calm that down. It opens all the bronchioles and it, and it helps with that. Um, I use cypress for sore throats, believe it or not. I've heard that people actually stick it in their throats. I can't even imagine that because it's very burny. Think of what like a cypress tree is, it's very burny. But I heard people do that. I don't suggest that you do it, but what I do suggest is put a couple of drops in a lotion or in, an, in a, like an oil, like a jojoba or sweet almond, and rub it around your, your throat, all around here. And for me, it always helps my sore throats, but that's a premier one for sore throat. Rosemary, we use rosemary for chicken, don't we? Everybody cooks chicken and we stuff it with rosemary and, oh, I love it. Um, but rosemary is amazing for aches and pains. I use it in a lot of my massage uh, products. It has a warming quality to it, and so it, when you're massaging it on an ache or pain or if your arm hurts, it kind of relaxes, brings circulation, it moves the blood, and that's what you want when you have an ache and pain. You want it not to be stagnant, you want it to move. So rosemary is one of the premier oils for that. Um, helps with mucus, make sure you always dilute it, and if you put it on your chest and your upper back, when you're starting to get a cold, just one or two drops with a little handful of oil or lotion, it would help you um, with any cold, um, respiratory or colds or anything of the upper chest. So um, rosemary is really amazing. I love that. Orange is a citrus oil. It's, orange is cold pressed. So all the oils, except for the citruses, are steam distilled. But orange, lemon, bergamot, they're cold um, pressed. So they just like get a big, because it's in the peel. So when you open an orange and those little sparkly thing comes out, those are, that's actually the essential oil. That's where the essential oil comes from. Some cells that are on, on the actual peel. Orange is amazing. It's, Kids love orange. If you have kids that are, you know, hyperactive or whatever, orange kind of makes them happy and kind of calms them down. Orange is very high energy and it dissipates really fast in the air. Orange is amazing for like anti-depression or, you know, you're feeling blue. It's a very gray day. Diffuse orange or smell it. Even a, a regular orange will help you. Um, the one thing about citruses that you have to know is that they are skin sensitizing. So somebody went to um, a, a store and they, they said, you know, I'm feeling a little blue. Can, can you give me an essential oil for that? And the, the, the clerk said, oh, orange is lovely. Orange is lovely for that. Yep, it's lovely. She said, how about you use it? So she, he's like, oh, put a little here. Make sure you inhale it. So she went and she did that, it was in the summertime. And so she took a little bit of oil and she went like this, right on her chest. And what happened was, she went out into the sun. Well, she got burned. Citrus oils burn you. Lemon, bergamot, um, orange, any of, the, any of those can burn you. You need to be very um, careful when, you, when, when you're handling the citrus oils. So um, diffuse it, put it on cotton balls, uh, put it in a spray and spray it all around, but don't put it on yourself. It could cause a burn. If you do put it on yourself, you need to wait about 12 hours before you go into the sunshine. Um, what else? Orange moves stagnant energy. And if you mix it with like cypress and you mix it with a little cinnamon, oh my gosh, it's lovely. It's like, especially now, kind of reminds you of like pumpkin pie. Somebody back there was 
with cream cheese. Yeah, you better bring some over there. Um, next one is amazing. It's juniper berry. Juniper berry is really very strong. The scent of juniper berry is very strong, but it's amazing for detoxification. It um, is astringent, antiseptic. I use it energetically more than, you can use oils energetic wise and you can use them for like the physical properties. Oh, it'll help this ache and pain. Juniper berry for me is an energetic oil. I use that for clearing. Um, since I'm a massage therapist, I work client and then I'll have another client and I'll have another client. Well, those clients, if they're stressed, they're not feeling well, that energy is, is staying right where it's at. You know, I'll make them feel better, but guess who's getting it? Me, all around, my, my whole office is getting it. So in between clients, in out comes my, my blend that has the juniper berry, and that really breaks everything up really well. Also, my Renee, who's a feng shui practitioner, we use juniper in breaking up the energy when she's clearing a home. So for me, I use juniper in an energetic way more than like a physical way. Um, helps with negative forces. I love it. It's also, I don't know if anybody knows, but it's also the prime oil from St. Michael, the Archangel. That's his, that's his oil, juniper berry. Mm. So, uh, and, huh? My granddaughter's name, juniper. Mm -hmm. That's a very powerful person. Juniper is really, it's for me one of my favorites, and not, not aromatically, because I don't like really the way juniper smells, but boy, energetically, that's my number one go-to all the time. And last, I like to talk about sweet marjoram. Um, sweet marjoram is m amazing for relaxation and muscle aches. I use sweet marjoram in all my blends that I, for nighttime, and it, it's for insomnia, it helps with muscle aches, it's really just so amazing. I use it in all my stuff. It um, is really great for emotional balancing, and um, it's one of my husband's favorites because he gets to sleep at night when, he, when we use that at night. So I hope that I helped a little with some information, and if you have any questions, just go visit me and I, I can talk to you, okay? Where are you based out of? And um, just, just in terms of location, are you in the U.S.? Or yes, I'm here in, I'm right here in Hackettstown. Yes. So, yeah. Where do you buy your oils? I have distributors. My distributors have all their oils that are GCM, MS tested. So they, you know the constituency of every single oil. I also have a distributor that you know, I know very well. She's a smaller distributor, and she doesn't have her stuff GCMS tested because it's really expensive. But she knows like, where the oil comes from. Like her frankincense, she knows the guy in Somalia who owns the frankincense trees and prays every day in front of that frankincense trees. So for me, even though it doesn't have the testing that I look for when I get my oils, that in and of itself is really special to me. And to me, it's just as important and powerful as the testing. So. Do you also sell <laughs> Yes. Yes, I do. It was very nice to talk to everybody. And have a good Thank night. You. Thank you.